Welcome listeners and viewers to another edition of CHP Talks. We are going to be discussing disability ethics today with Dr. Heidi Jans. And uh, so without any further ado, I'm going to ask Rod to introduce uh, Dr. Jans and then we'll get into our conversation. Well, it's a great uh, pleasure to have you with us today, Dr. Jans. <clears throat> Dr. Jans is an adjunct professor at the University of Alberta's John Dostater Health Ethics Center, where she specializes in disability ethics. <clears throat> she also serves as chair of the Council of Canadians with Disabilities Ending of Life Ethics Committee. She is a committed Christian and has multiple disabilities caused by cerebral palsy. As a disabled ethicist who is also a Christian, her life could correctly be described as an oxymoron. Now, welcome, Dr. Jans. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you for having me. So just by way of explanation quickly, um, Janelle is going to be echoing Dr. Jans, as uh, you heard in the introduction. Um, she has uh, uh, cerebral palsy, and so some of these um, <clears throat> things have affected her Ability to speak in a way that you might be uh, used to understanding. And uh, our first uh, question really is, um, it seems that uh, accessibility awareness in some parts of our culture is increasing. And uh, are you mostly encouraged by these developments, Dr. Jens? Unfortunately, no. Um, I I think I'm going to be playing the role of Jeremiah today. Despite all the talk about Canada being a society that's becoming increasingly accessible and inclusive. The fact is that disabled people remain one of the most marginalized populations in Canada. By and large, the marginalization that disabled people face is due to widespread ableism. <laughs> now you're probably going, what in the world is ableism? Um. Ableism is discrimination of and social prejudice against people with disabilities based on the belief that typical abilities are superior. At its heart, ableism is rooted in the assumption that disabled people require fixing and defines people by their disability. Like racism and sexism, ableism classifies entire groups of people as less than 
and includes harmful stereotypes, misconceptions, and generalizations of people with disabilities. So right now, in terms of barriers that disabled people face, uh, what do you see as the ones that need the most attention right now? I would put it in three main areas that people with disabilities face ableism. The first is societal ableism. That is a widespread belief that to have any kind of significant disability is to be other. Less than fully human and ultimately that to have a disability is a fate worse than death. Mm. <laughs> then there's systemic ableism. This is about disabled people being routinely denied rights and opportunities that most disabled, non-disabled people take for granted. This could be in the areas of education, employment, transportation, and housing. And also in uh, home-based personal care services, lack of home-based personal care services. Which disabled people need in order to live in the community. And finally, medical ableism. Studies consistently show that despite their training, healthcare professionals are not immune to dominant societal attitudes towards disability. Furthermore, from a biomedical perspective, disability is seen as an inherent deterrent to a person's quality of life. Mm -hmm. 
Consequently, healthcare professionals often automatically equate having a disability with having a poor quality of life. <laughs> You're being zoom bombed by my cat. <laughs> <laughs> His name is awkward, and he is. <laughs> okay. Hmm. Reality. So, could I ask a, a question, Doctor Jans? Um, we uh -huh. uh, we know that for the last few years uh, we've had the plague uh, in our in our perspective. It's a terrible thing, the legalization of assisted suicide uh, throughout the country and our. Prime Minister seems to be moving in the direction of uh, making that more accessible, more prevalent. Um, how do you see that, or, or can you uh, comment on that, uh, how that affects the world, uh, the, the perspective, both from <clears throat> inside the disabled community and from outside of the uh, value of life and the worth of life for disabled people? Yeah. With the proposed new made legislation, Basically, the government is saying we won't give disabled people the support they need to live. But we will help you die. That's like the ultimate discrimination, reinforcement of discrimination I was talking about. Right. Uh, for example, I know people like Sean Taggart in BC a year ago. A man in the end of life who had ALS. He actually wanted to live as long as possible because he had a young son. He wanted to stick around for his son. He was living with his parents and he fought the system for four more hours of health care. He was repeatedly denied. Hmm. I miss said health care, but it was home care that he was trying to gain four more hours of. And he was forced to choose either um, not getting it and not getting what he needed or move into a a senior's residence four hours away from home and not have access to his son. Or maid. Or maid. I killed 
quote and unquote made. And he chose quote and unquote made. No. The the message where people with disabilities are getting, frankly, frankly, is that we are not worth the the resources. We cost too much. We cost too much. Hmm. It's a very sobering message. And um, I just want to underline a couple of things there. Um, the the message that's come across now a couple of times is that there's members, um, there's politicians and um, and others that are basically giving the message that certain people are better off dead. And uh, that's a that's a terrible, terrible message. Um, it's it's worse than you know any racial discrimination um, that we're probably seeing in this country. Um, and it's uh, it's a terrible um, commentary, and it's an ignored uh, message by so many. But I, I want us all to think about for just a minute um, the fact that even if you are you know perfect able and and strong right now um, you know you're, you're one accident away from perhaps being disabled yourself um, and uh, we all should... I often call not non-disabled people tabs temporarily able-bodied Right. <laughs> yeah, that's right. That's right. right. Yeah. That's true. Yeah. Because the same forces of evil are at work. Uh, we see it particularly in BC right now, where the BC government is trying to get uh, the Delta Hospice Society to, they're trying to compel them to uh, perform euthanasia on those who are at the end of life. And, uh, you know, that compounds, the evil is compounded when you're forcing other people to act against their conscience to do what they know is wrong. So we're really troubled about this whole situation. I've been following that case and yes, it's very troubling. My fear is that if this persists, that people of faith will not be able to practice medicine. And uh, that no, they're already <clears throat> pushing in that direction with uh, with law. You know, we saw the Trinity Western University, uh, they weren't allowed to have a law school. So that means, uh, you know, it's harder for Christian people who want to hold on, get a Christian education to become lawyers, which is a prerequisite for becoming a judge in this country. Uh, and the judges are making a lot of the legislation, uh, you know, through the back door. So it's you're right. Um, when people are forced to choose between their conscience and being able to operate in, in one of these uh, uh, disciplines, it's uh, uh, very troubling, very troubling. Did you have any other um, comments or thoughts that you wanted to share, Dr. Jens, at this point? Um. I want to talk a little bit about Christian responsibility discipline. The Christian response to disability rights. 
If, if there's time. Um, yeah, oh, please do. Yeah. Uh, uh, well, I'm just getting I'm done with the delivery device where it is that Daniel would be very honest having to do a lot of in general, Christians aren't having discussions about disability rights. <coughs> I think this is in itself problematic. In my view, the backlash would be understand all people are very in the us and as a Christian, we know that every life is an image bearer of God, God's nature, and that we have a. If we this should make us natural allies. Sorry. In, in advocating for disability rights. But this often isn't the case. I think that many Christians suffer from our own form of ableism. That we talk about the disabled as a group that should be ministered to. And in doing that, we maintain the idea that disabled people are part of them and not us. No, I think we as Christians need to recognize that there is no them and us. That we either are disabled or are going to be at some point. No, um, yeah. We, we, we are that we really need to start ministering to one another as equals. Yeah, I think that's very convicting. Um, and uh, hopefully everyone who's listening has, has learned something, has been convicted perhaps of um, their way that they, they have thought about um, disabled people and about disability rights. It's, uh, 
Thank you very much, Dr. Jans, for yeah. sharing these thoughts with us. We uh, appreciate your perspective and um, your your insights. Um, it's obvious that uh, you have an ability to speak to this in a way that uh, many don't, and we really appreciate this. Yes, thank you very much, Dr. Jans. <laughs> A pleasure to be here. Thank you. Well, thank you again, and uh, thank you all who have been listening and watching. We um, hope that you will uh, join us again uh, next week for another edition of CHP Talks. God bless you. Yes, thank you very much. <laughs>